Hi, my name is Ming Yao from Singularity Engineering. In this video, I'll show you how to calculate the damping coefficient from a combined mechanical CFD simulation. Damping coefficients typically are calculated using experimental methods. So you can do some, do some testing and gather the damping coefficients. For certain classes of devices like MEMS devices, it can be very difficult to actually measure the damping of the structure. So here we're showing you a method to do this using simulation. We're going to set up a, this is a squeeze film damping model. Uh, the beam is made of gold. And let's take a look at the setup for the modal side of it. And modal analysis is one of the simplest simulations we can do and obviously extremely useful. It lets us calculate the resonant frequencies for our structure and also the mode shape. It's the mode shape we're interested in here. Uh, so I want to assign three layers to the thickness so we can get that mode shape very accurate. And let's put in a, a sizing. Okay, so that's our beam with three layers through the thickness. We want to select all of the faces. Actually, we want to select the, the body here and give it a name selection. We'll call it beam. And then we want to assign our uh, boundary conditions or supports. Okay, so we're going to try to calculate the first six modes. Really, we only, we only are interested in the first one. And what we will do is use the ANSYS APDL commands to set a command to generate a CSV file that has the appropriate formats for our CFD simulation. What we're doing here is we're going to model this, get the first resonant frequency, in this case, 54,313 hertz, and we're going to write this out as a CSV file, a deformation, to um, in the solution folder, and we'll use the CSV file in our fluid dynamics analysis to set up the deformations. In this case, we'll use uh, ANSYS CFX for that purpose. So let's go ahead and start setting up our CFD side of the simulation. First, we mesh our fluid domain. We no longer need our structures section. No, this one. So we have the air region. We're going to assign a sizing where we capture the proximity of the model. And we want to specify the location of interest the beam itself. Select all the surface of the beam and give it a name. Call it beam as well. And that's it. So we have a mesh that is a couple hundred thousand nodes. And we have um, a name selection called beam where the beam works. So now we can set up our CFD analysis. Using the ANSYS CFX uh, turbo blade row setup allows us to set up these models pretty quickly. Uh, we can interpolate, initialize the profile data. So this is the, the data that we generated in our previous simulation, this beam CSV file. It knows the units, it imports all of this information, and it creates a, a user-defined beam profile for us. All right, let's set up our simulation here. It's going to be air at 25 degrees C. There's a number of passages and passages in 360. This is for rotating machinery, so we'll set everything at 1 here. Switch the turbulence model to laminar. And then um, let's set up the beam. So this will be, uh, the beam will be a wall. And we're going to use profile data. 
generate these values. Oh, before I do that, I need to make sure that domain deformation is specified. So it's based on initial mesh, and it's a displacement diffusion. So it'll def it'll move the mesh around as it runs the simulation. So let's try that again. We'll have a beam, which is a wall, and we'll generate the values for our displacement, and it recognizes all of this. We don't want this to deform a lot. You can see that our mesh can move a little bit, but if we move too far, this mesh will get collapsed. So there's an option here to, to specify the amplitude of the motion. So we're going to do... Um, and do microns here, so do 0.2 microns, so it'll only move a little bit. Um, and there's a few options here, and that then sets up the the, uh, the simulation for this. Uh, we want to put in a time period, so let's do 20 time steps and. Um, let's do uh, three periods to run. So we'll do three cycles of vibrations. And the period is, is 1 over the frequency. So 1 divided by 1 the beam frequency. Okay, so it calculates the time step and the number of periods automatically. It says here I need to ensure we have initial condition, so I'm going to do that. Uh, global initial conditions, there will be no motion initially, and some amount of relative pressure. All of the surfaces here are walls. In this particular case, I, think, I believe the top is assumed to be an opening, so we can add that in. And we'll do a zero pressure and direction. What we want to do in this analysis is calculate the damping. And ANSYS has a built-in aerodynamic damping option available. There is a normalization value here, which is 4 times the... Um, 4 pi times the total energy. So this is our critical damping value. And this will calculate, automatically integrate the amount of work done on this, this blade during one vibration cycle. But we need to d divide it by the critical damping uh, value in order to get a coefficient. And for this, we need a total energy during the vibration process. For that, we can go back to Workbench and perform a harmonic simulation of this uh, of this device. So we'll do a harmonic analysis using the same model as we set up earlier. It is going to use the same geometry, mesh, and material properties. So here we have the modal analysis with the proper resonant frequencies. We want to copy the supports. The the first resonant frequency is this value here, so we'll, go, we'll be using that for our harmonic analysis. Um, and what we want is enforce a 0.2 micron displacement. So let's switch to microns. Uh, so that the displacement of the beam is the same as that in our um, CFD simulation. So we'll do a displacement of this uh, in the z-axis by 0.2 microns. Now let's run our analysis. We can visualize the deformation. You can see that it looks very similar to the first mode shape that we're looking for, except the deformation is almost exactly 0.2 microns.
we can then extract our uh, the energies for the total energy for our system. So we're going to use the worksheet, and here is the potential and kinetic energy in our system. Uh, conveniently, conveniently, ANSYS provides a total energy uh, calculated. So it's uh, 0 0.139 or 0 0.138 uh, picojoules. So we can use that for our CFD analysis. Now that we have the total kinetic energy of the system, we can go back to CFX and put in the appropriate critical damping coefficient. So the normalization value here we'll use an expression to define. So we'll call this uh, total energy, and the value is picojoules. So if we switch to SI units, it's this value. And critical damping is four times pi times total energy. So this will be our this will be the expression that we created. So this will be the critical damping value. Okay, so now let's run the simulation. And we'll run this on four cores. Now that the simulation is completed, we can take a look at the aerodynamic damping calculated in CFX. You can see that we did three cycles of the vibration. With each cycle, the damping gets closer and closer to the final value. The final value is about 1.35 or 13.5%, uh, and this matches up nicely with our squeeze film damping calculated using S Mechanical. This gives you a method to estimate the aerodynamic damping for various types of geometries, and it allows you to design MEMS devices without having to characterize damping. Hopefully this video has been of interest to you. If you like it, please like us on YouTube and visit us on singularityeng.com. Have a good day. Bye-bye.